Hello everyone, I'm just going to run through some stuff before we get started on this engine rebuild. You're going to need some type of a reference manual that will give you the tolerances and the specifications for the specific engine that you're going to rebuild. Me, I'm working on a small block Chevy here from a 1971 Chevrolet K10 four-wheel drive truck. And so what I have here is a Chilton's Auto Repair Manual, 72 to 79, 72 to 71, blah, 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 same thing. Tolerances are pretty much the same. Um, small block Chevy is pretty much a small block Chevy. So it gives me all the tolerances I can go through from general engine specifications to ring end gaps to ring side clearances to the piston, uh, the oil clearance specifications on the main and uh, rod bearing journals. You will need something like this to refer back to because nobody can remember all of this information. Small block Chevy is probably the one that you could remember of most of them because they're pretty much standard almost all the way through from beginning to end. Another good reference is this is How to Hot Rod Small Block Chevys. It's an excellent book, goes through information, gives you a lot of information on not only rebuilding but performance issues that go through here. Uh, it is another great reference manual that works for me. I really like these two. They get me through all of my rebuilds that I've done over the years and nobody can remember everything. I like to do everything pretty much myself and I find I, I get better results and if I make a mistake, I make a mistake and I learn from it. From there we'll go into the rebuild. So this is my short block. It's basically on an engine stand and I have this sheet covering it up. You're going to want something to cover your block up while you're not working on it so when somebody comes through and rustles up the dust it's not all over on the bearing surfaces and if it takes too long of a time for you to get your engine rebuilt as it is for me you want to make sure to clean those surfaces before you start putting parts together especially surfaces like the uh, rod and main bearing journals. So this is the engine out of my 1971 Chevrolet K10 four-wheel drive truck and it had 125,000 miles on it. The last time I went through it I just kind of went through the heads. Uh, this time I did a full rebuild. I took the block, the heads, uh, flywheel, to Terry's engine rebuilding in Howard, Wisconsin and had him bore it 30 over to match the pistons that I got. I had him hone the cylinders, cook the block, cook the heads, verify the valve job and the heads that I did the last time and he did put new guides in it. I had not checked that. I uh, Moved on with a couple other things. I had them put new cam bearings in the block. And at that point in time, I was uh, up to this point to install a crankshaft. Uh, he put new freeze plugs in it too. I had checked the crankshaft and verified the dimensions prior to sending the block to him. Well, I had the block decked too and the heads milled, just cleaned up. And uh, so right now I just put the crankshaft in with the bearings lubricated on the actually what, what's the lower part of the block when it's upside down. Lubricated that side, set the crankshaft in, put a uh, half inch of plastic gauge in each one of the bearing surfaces, crankshaft surface, and then put the bearing caps on Tightened them all down, torque them in uh, 30, 50, 65. The main cap bolts are torqued to 75 on this engine, and the outer bolts are torqued to 65 on this engine. So, right now it is all torqued and in place with the plastic gauge in. I will now remove all of the bolts. 
from the main caps and verify what the plastic edge is. So what you're looking at now is the number one main bearing journal and when I put the plastic gauge on it you will see that it's about two thousandths of an inch clearance after the torquing with the plastic gauge in. I like to always verify it with the measuring and then go back with the plastic gauge and verify it. Second verification you know where it is then. There's, there's no doubt with the plastic gauge. And uh, all of the journals came with specs. They were all between uh, one and a half and, and two thousandths. I like my engines to be semi-loose. I'd rather run a little bit thicker oil and have a loose engine so that the crankshaft and all the parts are uh, flowing in oil and not parts rubbing against parts. Um, the number five journal on my truck which has a manual transmission is 2.3 thousandths to 3.3 thousandths so it's got a little bit of wider uh, amount of, of clearance there and uh, yeah, that came within specs too that was about two thousandths also maybe a little over two thousandths now I will uh, go back through remove the crankshaft lubricate the rear oil seal and install it uh, put a little RTV on the ed two edges where the brakes are uh, lubricate the main bearing caps set them back in place and torque everything back together so I always like to install my main bearing caps all hand tight first so when I get the block back from the work being done on it I like to run through all the holes and clean them out with a bottoming tap just to make sure that when I get my torque specs they are correct otherwise if you hit a tight spot in a threaded hole you might have a a high torque and actually it would be lower than what spec would be so I always like to clean them out and then run these caps down whether it be main bearing or rod bearing caps or anything I like to run everything down by hand tight first and then after it's all run down by hand tight then I will uh, go on it with a a uh, 3 8 air ratchet which is normally about 30 foot pounds and that gives it my first torque of of approximately 30 foot pounds so right now that's all basically tight by hand so now I will start at the center and work outward and I will bring it up until they're snugged up with the air ratchet and that will bring my caps to approximately 20 30 foot pounds okay so now they're semi evenly torqued to approximately 30 foot pounds at this point in time, now I will go with the torque wrench and I will verify the 30 foot pounds with the torque wrench. So that's where it's set right now. And again, I will start in the middle. I got it clicker torque wrench so this is kind of old school but as long as it works good really doesn't make a difference it's an old school engine so take it like I said earlier to uh, three increments so basically 30 is my first increment and I'll take it up to about 50 which is right there
Everything is now torqued to 50. So now we'll go up to 65. As I said earlier, the main bearing caps bolts are torqued to 75, but on a four bolt main block on my engine, they're the outer bolts are torqued to 65. So our next increment we'll go up to will be 65. And that will be the final torque on the outer bolts. All right, now we'll go up to 75, and I'll go back over now just the mains, and not the outers. Take these up to 75. I'll go back over and verify them. As you can see, I'm not getting any turn on any of the bolts. It's immediately clicking. So that tells me that those bolts are at the 75 foot-pounds that they're supposed to be at. Now that I torqued them down to 75, I'm going to back the torque wrench back off to 65 and I'm going to go over the other ones on the outside of the 4 bolt main. And those also, I'm not getting any bolt turn on them. So they are also at their 65. I like to uh, go back over and verify them at 65 because after these were torqued to 75 there's a chance you might pick a little bit up on these. Always remember your main caps all have arrows that face forward and everything before I disassembled was numbered 1, 2, 3, 4 and of course you know which one is 5. Same thing for the rods. Before you disassemble, make sure everything is marked. You can also see on the crankshaft, I ran over it and cleaned it up with emery cloth. But before I did that, I chamfered the oil holes. And I will give you a closer look at that in just a minute. Uh, first, I want to just uh, put a revolution on this crankshaft just to move that lubricant around inside of there so everything feels good so there you can see the chamfered oil holes I take a uh, router bit on the end of a die grinder and very carefully go around and clean them out otherwise you have a sharp edge on that bearing journal and that sharp edge will score the actual bearings and this allows the lubricant to flow out better and wear on the journal itself without um, uh, scratching the bearing surface up. But you've got to make sure that you hold on to it tight and be very, very careful while you're doing it so that you don't end up running that uh, die grinder across that journal face because uh, then you're screwed.